Hello and welcome. My name is Seth. Today I'm going to be talking about the cinematography of my short film, Night Drop. If you haven't seen it yet, please go and watch. It's only about two and a half minutes. Very short, very simple. It's got some fire, it's got some blood. Give it a watch. So let's get into it. The short is part of a series that I'm working on that is basically practicing different skills. I really wanted to focus on lighting a car scene for this one. And so knowing that I had a lot of restrictions in what I was doing, I decided to make this a very simple, simple setup. In this situation, I really wanted the uh, director of photography work to stand out and do it in a way so that if I do screw up, I can just learn from it and try it again some other time. So prep for this film, first I did a shot list based off the script I wrote, then I did a series of storyboards and I did some lighting tests. Uh, these lighting tests were just me going out, setting up a couple lights and trying out different looks trying to see what seemed the most realistic and also got the tone across that I wanted. I really wanted this film to seem a little grounded, but also have a beautiful look. I originally, and in the lighting test you can see, I was just doing LED panels. Uh, these panels lit the scene nicely and I was able to just check what angles I wanted the light to come from, but they weren't quite big enough and they cast a little bit too much of a shadow for what I wanted the film to look like. So on the night of, I switched the idea around, I decided to shoot a Godox SL60 into a just a six in one bounce reflector. It was pretty simple. I ran a cord out from my house to the street I was shooting on. I have a pretty quiet street where I live. And so this made a perfect filming location. I ran power out to the street and was able to set up that light. The light cast a nice middle ground of soft and harsh light. You know, it could be like a street light from above or moonlight or something that you don't really question why it's there, but it just illuminates their face so you can see their performances. Transitioning from that, I went ahead and added the LED panels as the car's headlights. So when they come on, I flip on those panels, they're bicolored, so I switched it to tungsten and I uh, added that light in. So it's just like a ton of stuff coming in. I wanted to give that feeling as if you're trying to look through someone's brights on the highway. Uh, as a backlight, I had the Aperture MC. It's a very small light. It was pretty great. I was able to color match the street light above the car to the Aperture MC using their Sidious Link app or Aperture app. And that really helped in this situation so I could use the same light and same color of the light so I didn't have to kind of mess with any of that. This is what is acting as like a kicker light for both of the actors and what I used pretty much the whole night as a kicker light. It's also lighting from the underside, looking at the dead person on the roof. That was a really tricky lighting scenario. I was not able to use any other lights in the car because it all casts reflections in the glass moonroof. So really it was uh, just putting that light up against the, the glass up top. The setup for most of the night is just that Godox SL60 into that circular reflector. I moved that around for different angles so that when we are looking at the French overs, I would move it so it's on their far side or pretty much directly in front of them so you make sure you've got a nice shadow on their face the whole time. I wanted to make sure the drama was always there and they never seemed camera lit. Inspiration for this film visually came from a few different areas. One is the film Prisoners. There's a few different car scenes that were really beautiful that Roger Deakin shot. And I kind of pulled inspiration from those, especially a scene where Jake Gyllenhaal and Hugh Jackman are in the car together and it's raining outside. I kind of used that idea of French overs and looked at how they shot that and that was really helpful. Also, I shot this photo in college that was inspired from something else I can't even remember, but I liked the visual interest with this photograph and I wanted to kind of replicate that and replicate that lighting style. I used that as a little bit of inspiration, which is weird because now I'm saying I was inspired by myself, which was inspired by something else. Anyways, the lighting for the last shot. This was 
something that was shot a year after our first shoot date. <laughs> this has been sitting on the back burner for so long and I haven't released any of this for so long because I wanted to get this shot. It is an image that I've just had in my head for a long time. You know, why does this vampire hold a Molotov cocktail? I don't know, but it's just something I wanted to put on screen and it somewhat matched this film, so I just did it. And so the lighting for this, I wanted to emphasize the car headlights behind him, even if it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. So I put two LED panels crossing both sides of his head. And then I had a Nanlite um, Pavo Tube C, or it was the uh, firelight flicker from, instead of just him being lit from that, that Molotov. I tried some testing with just the Molotov, but it was just way too dark and I, the flame is not consistent. For the Molotov cocktail, I just put water in a bottle and put a paper towel inside of it and lit it on fire and then ran and hit record on the camera. That was pretty much what I was doing. For the vampire teeth, my actor came up with this genius idea of cutting out marshmallows and pushing them onto his teeth. And it worked so, so well. And they almost look a little imperfect, which I like. It's not a straight, perfect vampire tooth. For a little bit more interest, I had someone turn on a fog machine behind him so it lifts through the, the scene and uh, just so we have some extra movement. It is a very glamorized shot, so I, and I know that, and I was very excited about it. I get very excited about these shots that are just like so over the top in some elements that you're like, whoa, like such a visually rich image, and this is one of those. So the camera used for this film was the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. I own this camera and we use the Rokinon 35mm and 85mm lenses with it. Uh, they're both EF mount so I speed boosted them to the camera. I'm very excited to share this project with everyone and I'm excited to work on more stuff in the future. So if you have any questions or have anything you want me to answer, feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll try to answer those for you. If you would like to see more, like and subscribe. I hope to put out more projects like this in the future. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day and keep creating.